Hi, this is Dr. Yukio Ishizuka. Welcome back to the part two of how borderline personality disorder is completely overcome through life track. This is a case of Jane and Tim. During, in the part one, I have taken you through to the first two weeks of Jane and Jim. I will skip you through the first part quickly so that uh, uh, we will get to the part two and spend more time on actually how things changed, how Jane and Tim has gone through transformation of their personality. This video is of interest for people who have suffered from borderline personality disorder over the years and have tried various approaches, or a therapist who may be interested in learning about something completely out of box of traditional treatment uh, approaches. I have touched on my personal background. Free, I was born in Japan, grew up in post-war Japan, went through medical school, and uh, was quite an active uh, student activist and international conferences, organizations, and then had a personal encounter with Zen master Ishiguro, and that made a profound impact. Now I did internship at the uh, Air Force, U.S. Air Force Hospital, and then came to the United States, did another year of medical internship at Jefferson in Philadelphia, and then did psychiatric residency at Harvard Medical School uh, at Massachusetts Mental Health Center. And then having found psychiatry uh, lacking in what I was looking for, I decided to venture into management, management consulting career at Arthur Digital and onto McKinsey and Company, uh, going from Paris, Amsterdam, Toronto, Canada, and New York, establishing Mitsubishi Corporation subsidiary for acquisition of U.S. companies as part of the strate strategic um, approach for Japanese corporation to creatively become integrated in American economy. And then uh, Iranian oil crisis interrupted my uh, business career suddenly, and I decided to return to psychiatry after 10 years of full-time business career. And the last 40 years, I have been full-time independent private practitioner of psychiatry in New York. Now, our subject, borderline personality disorder, the nine diagnostic criteria are familiar to most of you, and DSM gone through seven revisions, and the borderline personality disorder became prominent after third revisions as the number of uh, diagnostic criteria increased uh, close to 300 and then stopped. Now, diagnostic criteria has always been questioned, uh, reliability, validity. National Institute of Mental Health has questioned the super whether this diagnostic criteria tends to be superficial classification of symptoms and uh, emphasis on personality disorder may not be adequate, according to some, and dividing lines seem unclear, and cultural bias and an over-medicalization may pose some problems. Now, I have introduced ancient diagnostic criteria 3,000 years old by Buddha, the eight categories of human suffering, to live, let live, give birth, aging, illness, death, loss, lack of fr and frustration, indecision, and regret over a mistake made, and interpersonal problems. But he didn't stop there. He thought there was a second factor which determined whether a person suffers or not. So following the Buddha's line of thought, which says whether a person suffers or well-adjusted depends on the consequence of interaction between inevitable life challenges and his or her personality, the way the person responds to challenges in life. 
And then I took another step, defining personality as a pattern of thoughts, feelings, and actions, which in turn determines one's threshold of tolerance of life challenges. So taking yet another step, suffering, anxiety, anger, physical symptoms, depression, and psychosis, which we have traditionally considered diseases and disorders, may be simply signal that our minds send out when our threshold of tolerance has been exceeded and our mind not knowing what to do, how to cope, it sends out vague, indirect signals, nevertheless preoccupying, forcing us to reach out for help. Now, we have touched on Holmes and Ray's famous study, 43 Most Stressful Life Events, and then top three, and five or six out of top 10 come out of the disruption of marital relationship or comparable close relationship. And the marriage and the marital reconciliation were among those important uh, cause of high stress. Now we reviewed four major schools of borderline personality disorder, DBT, Gestalt therapy, mentation therapy, insight oriented therapy. And I've explained in part one how life drug therapy have not been able to expand outside of my independent uh, but isolated private practice over the last 40 years and the wisdom method at least for 30 years. Now, according to life drug concept, borderline personality disorder is not considered diseases or disorders. It is simply considered as an outcome of heroic and successful survival in extreme adversity in childhood. This is the way they had to become to survive. Premature and extreme self-sufficiency is inevitable, and many positive qualities are developed in the process, not sufficiently recognized traditionally, and the denial and explosion of uh, negative emotions characterize their adjustment pattern, and low self-esteem and unhappy state of mind seems to be normal state for borderline personality. And the inability to experience satisfaction, intense fear of closeness, and extremely low threshold of tolerance for challenges in life, these things are inevitable, natural, and normal consequence of becoming borderline personality. I even congratulate my borderline personality patients. Despite their tremendous suffering over the years, they have done as well as they could have under difficult circumstances that they had to grow up. And I often joke with them saying, the next time around, pay attention and make sure you pick better pair of parents. But I also add that you should not even, uh, blame your parents either because your parents had to grow up in complicated, difficult environments. That's how they turned out to be the way they were. And they did not know any other way but to raise you the way they did with good intentions. And you had to do your best to deal with it. There's no villain, only victims. The goal of therapy, life track therapy, is to transform borderline personality, preserving positive qualities, and raise the low threshold by overcoming formidable character defense put up by borderline personality that wants to stay that way and try to resist the change. The method to achieve it is a three-way teamwork, patient, partner, and the therapist, rather than one in a traditional mode, and focus exclusively on bringing two people far closer than ever before. Once they experience successful close relationship, they are no longer borderline personalities. And to do that, we have patient and partner perform daily self-rating, and that self-rating uh, numbers are turned into computer graphs and over the internet, it can be displayed during the session 
side by side, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, and uh, compare, analyze, and interpret to help them to overcome the waves of defense provoked by the attempt to raise their threshold of tolerance, first in close relationship with each other, and eventually in self and achievement spheres. In order to succeed in approach requires sufficient distress often needed to motivate the patient to go through this challenging process of treatment. This is distinctly the road less traveled. And yet, when they do go through with it, the result is quite rewarding. Second condition is the presence and participation of proper partner, hopefully honest, tender, and committed. As I have pointed out, about half of borderline patients are with partners who are eminently qualified and highly desirable in many respects, open-minded, patient, committed, and um, forgiving of the uh, borderline personality that they deeply love and committed to. If that is a case, I am greatly optimistic that they should be able to overcome borderline personality as long as they don't give up too soon. Third condition is that we should be able to maintain the three-way teamwork for several months, usually meeting once a week, guided by daily self-rating that they both perform. Now, therapy can be performed over the internet, so it doesn't matter where patient and a partner and the therapist might be, as long as all three have access to internet. We can have the session as if all three are sitting together looking at the same computer screen. The limitation of this approach is that uh, I have not succeeded in case of schizophrenia and other psychotic and strongly narcissistic uh, uh, conditions in one of the two of the partners. Bipolar disorder, substance dependence, even strong history of it, and antisocial or dangerously violent patients and people who prefer other approaches I have not been able to help. Now, this is the three spheres of personality model, uh, the way the person thinks about, thinks, feels, and acts about oneself, and how the person thinks, feels, and acts in close relationship, and in achievement spheres, define that per person's personality. And depending on the personality, threshold of tolerance of life challenges is set. Uh, when past experience and current capability to cope is reached and then exceeded by life challenges, everybody seems to manifest stress symptoms in five broad categories, anxiety, anger, physical symptoms, depression, and psychosis. Sometimes we retreat, sometimes we overcome. Goal of treatment is to raise the threshold of tolerance, make breakthrough, and to cope with a higher level of challenge. Thus, stress symptoms disappear because it becomes no longer necessary. This is considered as warning signal to force us to reach out for help from outside when we cannot solve it within ourselves. Now, when we are feel, we come to feel checkmated. Believe, come to believe that we cannot retreat, we cannot overcome, and cannot cannot uh, put up with uh, mounting anxiety and depression. Sometimes we may come to believe, uh, feel like stop suffering by dying, killing ourselves. And the people who attempt suicide have gone through that logical steps. And a hierarchy of symptoms, anxiety, anger, physical symptoms, depression, and psychosis seem to go up and down the staircase, escalating as challenge mounts and the diminishing as challenge diminishes. And the four key steps for problem solving or adaptation are recognition, perspective, decision, and action in that order. And the first step recognition is critical first step in problem solving and the life track total adjustment sheet 
the 41 parameters, anxiety, anger, physical symptoms, depression, psychosis, peaceful feeling, friendliness, physical well-being, happiness, mastery, positive and negative peak of that day, and then self, intimacy, and achievement spheres broken down to nine elements each, tracked every day by the patient and the partner. And the positive and negative aspect of physical condition, illness or injury or abuse of food or beverages, drugs, if any, and the positive health, how one might have helped that day, and the proper use of food and beverages. This seemed to cover all we have to know to help the patient to break out of the borderline personality or any other psychiatric problems, anxiety, depression, physical symptoms. These things are precipitated by their underlying personalities that define their threshold of tolerance in, uh, <clears throat> in various life situations. And when that self-rating has uh, become a norm, a routine, and everybody started doing it about 30 years ago, this patient 30 years ago showed me dramatically that intimacy rises first above the previous maximum of 10, provoking and overcoming waves of symptoms. Worse, when intimacy reached 20, for example. And every time symptom surged, self and achievement dipped, absorbing brunt of it, until symptoms seemed to diminish by exhaustion and finally disappeared when self and achievement started rising above previous maximum of 10, eventually catching up with intimacy that kept on rising, meeting at around 40 in this case, and then from that, that time on, continue to advance in balance, self, intimacy, and achievement together with little or no therapeutic intervention. Thus, breakthrough intimacy became an important concept because this patient was a severely depressed patient, almost killed himself, landed in a hospital. In that extreme condition, partly psychotic, under 24-hour suicide watch, he was still able to daily self-rating and a wife participating every day, commuting to the hospital every day to take part in the therapy sessions. The first intimacy broke out and started rising above 10. Breakthrough intimacy is the closeness between committed couples far beyond their previous maximal experience. This is what I try to help my patients achieve, whether they are borderline personality or with any other symptoms or problems. Now, Jane's background, quickly again, she was a student, college student in her 20s, and met Tim, the boyfriend, two years ago, and uh, started living together a year ago. That's when emotional volatility started, the high anxiety spikes and tension, irritability, explosive anger, menstrual irregularity, she would skip um, periods, and when the gynecologist who referred her to me, she had nausea and dullness, crying spells, severe depression with suicidal thoughts, and frequent violent, violent bouts, striking, biting, kicking, and throwing things at Tim, her boyfriend, that she loves the most. Now, family background was typical of borderline personality, the father was severely alcoholic and violent, and mother was chronically depressed. And the daughter, Jane, uh, had to worry about the mother instead of being protected by her. And her younger brother became violent also and um, uh, against her and the mother and had to be arrested at one point by police. Now, she qualified for nine out of nine criteria of borderline personality diagnosis. Now. I uh, have taken you through to second week. We'll go through the first week symptom. Two big spikes of symptoms, typical of borderline personalities. Within two or three days, high spike of symptoms disappears rapidly, although it reappeared in a week. Within a week, in high spike, depression is red, 
Pink is physical symptom, psychosis black, anxiety green. So second crisis struck within a week. Now, during that week, this is what was going on. For intimacy in this graph number 26, intimacy is pink line. It was way down at one the day before our first session. They had a big fight and almost broke up. But when they came together to the first session, intimacy score was above seven. And achievement and self were not as bad as the day before. But after she agreed to try to get closer to Tim, and Tim was they went home, had a big fight, and the intimacy retreats to near one. But the following day, her intense symptoms disappeared rapidly, and intimacy recovers quickly, precisely to the same level, and got blocked again by a surge of symptoms. We call her symptoms and everybody's symptoms as Gerira. Uh, the Gerida being uh, of five kind, anxiety Gerida, anger Gerida, physical symptoms, depression and psychosis Gerida, all dedicated to prevent Jane from breaking out of borderline personality. More specifically, preventing her from getting too close to Tim and stay too close too long. So every time she gets close, immediately Gerida or the symptom mobilizes to pull the intimacy down and then get exhausted, weakened, and then intimacy recovers to rise to higher peaks. And then Gerida came back in strength, and then the intimacy was pulled way down to zero. And on this day, she scored three times. In crisis, we recommend that they do it more than once, and a morning, afternoon, and a bedtime. By bedtime, her intimacy, which went down to zero, was beginning to rise ever so slightly. Now, Tim also had anxiety and anger provoked every time Jane became volatile, but his intimacy was struggling to stay above self and achievement, indicating how much he cares for her, despite tremendous trouble that she has been giving, her, giving him. And the crisis, though, uh, brought intimacy down, this time slightly below achievement and the self dipped the deepest. This is the first week. Now, let's go to the second week. Jane's symptom spiked up and then disappeared again. In three days or so, typical of borderline personality disorder. And then it seems to be beginning to rise again. Now, what was going on can be shown in this second graph, graph number 26. And normally, I go through 26 graphs one by one, analyzing, interpreting, and very telling and interesting. But for interest of time, I'm showing you only two symptoms, and graph number 26, to show you the progress and uh, the process of change. Now, second spike of symptoms brought the intimacy way down to zero, the worst level ever, and then got exhausted quickly. And then recovering intimacy the following morning was already back above seven. <coughs> Afternoon, it reached 9.3 or so. And then by bedtime, it was pulled down again by Gerida, who woke up and came back and tried to pull it down. But intimacy keeps on slightly higher each time. <coughs> Tim's two weeks, symptom spiked twice, and his intimacy was pulled down but already recovered as soon as stress diminished with intimacy rising above self and achievement. It's an admirable pattern. That was the end of the two weeks. And then uh, we went over the uh, uh, <clears throat> my therapy experience that the therapy was, was partner in three-way teamwork made it possible for them at least to last for two weeks. They could have dropped out already twice but they didn't, and three-way teamwork helped a lot in the process. Now, if I have a partner to work with, the results should be 10 times better. And after, if they can survive for one month, outcome then, at that point in time, becomes seven times better, proved dramatically. But a lot of people drop out during the first month when symptom gets worse and have the first or second crisis like Jane and uh, 
uh, Tim had to go through. But if they su survive through those crises and hang in there until the end, they should succeed 100%. Now, actual success rate, though, is about 50% at the time when I had about 224 borderline documented borderline personality patients um, about 10 years ago. Since the ratio hasn't don't seem to change at all, I have not been keeping up with the numbers. Now, let's go to part two and follow the progress of Jane and Tim. Now, third week, Jane's symptoms came back and kept on coming back in waves of combination of depression, the red line, symptoms pink, anxiety also went up, and psychosis, the black line joined after a considerable period of interval. So in many ways, her symptoms is getting worse during the third week. What was going on? Every time I open the following next graph, I do so with sense of suspension and anticipation and tremendous curiosity. So do my patients. Now, what was going on when this guerrilla kept on trying working so hard one wave after another was because intimacy rose so high above nine the guerrilla decided to keep on pulling it down to prevent it from going up again and then once guerrilla got exhausted temporarily and the intimacy slipped by and went right back to the same level so guerrilla came back for the second time to keep it down bring it to zero again like the last time and then got exhausted, and then intimacy started rising to six. So Guerrilla came back. Guerrilla was still strong enough to do this one wave after the other. Slowly, they become exhausted and become unable to do this. But still, at the point of three, third week, her Guerrilla is very strong and working even harder than before. Now, Tim had also high anxiety and even depression and physical symptoms. His symptoms also clearly worsened in terms of a combination of symptoms. It was first two of the hierarchy of defense, anxiety of anger. Now, physical symptoms, a third one. Depression, the force on that ladder is also participating. Clearly escalated defense or the symptoms, stress symptoms, and also lasting longer going on was that his intimacy rose to 9.1, hit the ceiling of defense, and then Guerrilla mobilized to bring it down. And then as Guerrilla started weakening by exhaustion, intimacy went right back up to eight. So it came back, Guerrilla came back to stop it at eight, hold it at eight, and got exhausted. So intimacy slipped by and went, broke through the ceiling at eight and approaching nine. In the middle, Guerrilla again tried to stop it, but couldn't, only slowed it down slightly, slightly, and then got exhausted. This was progress of Tim at the end of the third week. Let's see what happened in fourth week. Jane, another huge spike of depression, reaching eight came and anxiety went up to seven. Physical symptom, even psychosis, rose slightly. What was going on is a curious matter. We'll find out when we open the next graph. What happened was that intimacy rose above 10 for the first time. Now, after those three consecutive waves of defense got exhausted, there was an opening, so intimacy went right through almost achieved, uh, reached 10. That's when Guerrilla tried to stop it, pulled it down and got exhausted. So they could not maintain the ceiling at 10. Intimacy broke through, went to 12.3, and then Guerrilla came back in force, bringing intimacy down. But self and achievement, as you can see, dipped even deeper, absorbing the brunt of it. So intimacy remains above self and achievement. While previously it hit the ground zero, well below self and achievement, three times. But this time it went down only to seven. 
and then immediately recovered as soon as spike of defense weakened by exhaustion. This is fourth week for Jane. Let's look at Tim. Tim's symptoms also came back, but modestly, and anxiety persisted at three for several days, about three days, and then disappeared again. What happened? It's shown in this graph. His intimacy went to 10, got pulled down, and then broke through 10 and got stuck at the seating at 12 again. That's when anxiety guerrilla was preventing it from rising above 12. And then extra effort was made just as intimacy was beginning to rise above 12. And then guerrilla got exhausted. And then intimacy broke through the seating of because the guerrilla tried its best and could no longer hold the line at 12. So intimacy broke through. Self and achievement dipped, uh, dipped absorbing some of the uh, brunt of the defense, helping intimacy to become liberated from the uh, defense. Now, the fifth week, Jane's fifth week, symptom disappeared for a few days again three days or so, and then came back in combination of anxiety, physical symptoms, anger, and psychosis, considerable level, five, as a spike, and then physical symptoms. What was going on? We will find out in the next graph. Intimacy went all the way up to 17.6 at one point and hit the ceiling. The guerrilla came and then stopped it and started pulling it down dramatically down. Self and achievement again dipped even deeper, absorbing the brunt, brunt of it, and then intimacy stays very above self and achievement and trying to recover and get pulled down again. So this strong waves of defense was provoked by this breakthrough, which took intimacy way up at 17.6, which Guerrero is not supposed to allow it to happen. So they had to come back do their best to pull it back. This is a struggle between advancing closeness, intimacy, and her personality defense. The person, borderline personality should not be able to reach and stay at a very high level of closeness. And a borderline personality is trying to preserve it itself by resisting the breakthrough by intimacy and keeps on trying and keeps on bringing intimacy down. This week, Tim's symptom went up, anxiety reaching eight, anger, physical symptoms too. Pretty rough week for him. What happened? What happened was that his intimacy broke through 12, reached even 17.8, this is a maximum point here, and then get it immobilized, trying to stop it from rising any farther, and managed to pull it down and then self and achievement again dips deeply, absorbing brunt of it. So intimacy stops at 15 or so, 14 actually. And it looks like it may not go down much farther. It may be soon recovering. We'll see. Now, on six week, her Jane symptom, after having persisted for quite a long time, almost 10 days here, which is exceptional for borderline personality spikes of symptoms. Previously, it disappeared in three days. This time lasted for 10 days, symptoms taking, uh, alternating from physical symptoms, anger, anxiety persisted longest, and then depression also spiked at the end. What was going on is a very interesting question. We'll see the, res uh, the answer here. Defense or so the guerrilla tried extra hard to keep this intimacy from breaking out of the seating of 10 by pulling it way down and holding it down as long as it could, but it could not last any longer. It be became exhausted and then it was not able to hold this line at 10. Recovering intimacy went through 10 and 20, reaching 22.1. So every time 
intimacy recovered from setbacks. It kept on rising, reaching higher and higher peaks, while the waves after waves of defense or the symptoms kept on coming back. Now, Tim's sixth week, after a big wave of anxiety, anger, and physical symptoms, this seems to calm down. What happened was shown in the graph number 26. Now, after a major setback, with the self and achievement spheres dipping deeply, absorbing brunt of it, intimacy came close to 10, but it started recovering as soon as Gerida became exhausted and it reached 20 and went right through seeding of 20, reaching 26.3. So in order to maintain or pr protect the seeding at 20, Gerida made a major effort, which was absorbed uh, largely by self and achievement. Although intimacy was pulled down quite a bit, it was able to go right through the seeding of 20 because the Gerida exhausted itself could not hold the line of defense here anymore. Thus, rising intimacy provokes waves after waves of defense until defense or the guerrilla or res uh, resistance become weakened by exhaustion and intimacy keeps on rising beyond previous maximum level of 10. Now, double that and beyond in six weeks. Now they are past one first critical months. The prospect, prospect of their success has dramatically improved, should be seven times better at this point now. We'll see. Seventh week, symptom, Jane's symptom disappeared and stay quiet after particularly long sustained lasting 10 days. What happened would be a very interesting thing to see. Intimacy rose through 20, through 30, reaching 37.7. And then self and achievement seems to become liberated from the burden of absorbing waves of defense and beginning to rise above 10, the previous maximum level. This means the threshold of tolerance a first of intimacy has risen way above previous maximum, and the self and achievement sphere threshold of tolerance in those spheres are also beginning to improve. That's what this graph indicates. This is the beginning of stage three. Now, seventh week, Tim's symptoms remained quiet, and his intimacy kept rising. Slowed down a little bit, self dipped once, absorbing defense, although there was no record of spikes of symptoms. But it is clear that uh, underwater, his defense tried to prevent intimacy from rising and self sphere dipping to absorb some of it. Achievement sphere stagnated, also achieving, uh, absorbing uh, underwater defense allowing intimacy alone to keep on rising, now reaching 32.4. Ace week, anxiety came back in small spike. What happened was intimacy was almost reaching 40, and the guerrilla came back trying to stop intimacy from rising to 40, temporarily succeeding to pull it down, but it quickly exhausted itself. Intimacy went the ceiling of 40 and self dipped slightly and recovered quickly and achievement sphere also seemed to advance ace week almost two months at this point now tim he also had a spike of anxiety what happened would be interesting thing to find out and the next graph tells us that the intimacy tim's intimacy kept rising above 30, and then that process provoked another wave of defense, which achievement dipped to absorb, and self also slowed down in its advance, absorbing brunt of it. Intimacy did not seem to be affected at all. 
reaching 37.7, almost four times the previous maximum of 10, which was the original maximum. So the patient goes through the ceiling previous experience, first in intimacy, and eventually self and achievement follow. We'll see. Jane's ninth week, her anxiety was joined by a depression symptom. We'll see what, I, what was going on on the uh, graph number 26. Intimacy was rising above 40. That's when second wave of defense came back. Guerrilla came back to pull it down, succeeded, but got exhausted doing it. So recovering intimacy went right through the ceiling of 40 because the guerrilla could not stay there to hold the line of defense. Achievement and self also rose, recovering from the dip, absorbing this spike of symptoms. So it seems at ninth week, her intimacy is breaking through the ceiling of 40. Tim also had the spike of anxiety and anger. What was going on? was that intimacy was reaching 40, and the defense tried to prevent it, slowed it down, self-dips, absorbing brunt of it, and intimacy ended up recovering as soon as defense weakened by exhaustion, breaking through the ceiling of 40, reaching 44.4. Now skipping a month, and let's see what happened by the end of the third month. Her intimacy was resisted at 40. As you can see, the rugged line repeated Guerrero effort to pull it down, and then Guerrero weakened. Intimacy started rising above 50. And then there again, another series of waves of defense managed to pull it down below 50 and got exhausted. Intimacy broke through 50, reaching 56. That is three months. Intimacy rose above 20. Tim, three months, he had the period of considerable defense, waves of resistance, when his intimacy was rising above 50, repeatedly pulling back down, and then defense finally got exhausted, and then the intimacy recovers and went right through the ceiling of 60, reaching 66.3. You can see the repeated pattern, advancing intimacy, provoking defense, and defense become exhausted, and uh, intimacy recovers and keep on rising, reaching higher and higher peaks than before. This is three months. Let's go to four months and first look at Jane. Her resistance seems to have ceased after intimacy broke through 50. The graph, the line of intimacy, become much smoother, although it still shows slowdown occasionally, indicating that the resistance is still persisting underwater. She was not aware of it, so she did not score it. But if you look at intimacy and self and achievement, it is clear that there was a resistance that intimacy and self and achievement sphere had to meet and overcome although there was no conscious record of symptoms. Let's go to Tim. Tim's resistance also seemed to end after his intimacy broke through seating of 70. This was the last ditch effort on the part of his guerrilla. And then after that, self and achievement started rising rapidly and smoothly as did intimacy. Intimacy now reaching 77.4. Jane's intimacy reached in part 100. So interesting graph indicates the scale was readjusted. So 100 became 10, 50 became 5, 1 tenth, and then 10 became again previous maximum. And then self-rating continued. Intimacy rose to new 10 and then had a one big... Uh, spike of symptoms that was not jane's problem it was tim her boyfriend had a crisis and that affected her somewhat but after that crisis intimacy broke right through the new 
previous maximum of 10, rising with self, and achievement also rising above 10. This is fifth month. Let's look at, in more detail, what happened after the scale of readjustment. Very interesting. The same thing is repeating itself. Now 10 is again the previous maximum for her. And intimacy averaged out, became 9. It was 90 on the average. Now, quickly, it begins to rise towards new previous maximum of 10, provoking one spike of symptoms. And after recovering from the setback, it finally reaches 10. And the beginning to rise above 10, that's when the second bigger wave of defense was mobilized was absorbed by self and achievement dipping deeply. S intimacy was also slightly pulled down, but as defense quickly exhausted itself, intimacy recovers and broke right through this new previous maximum of 10. And there was one small spike of defense at 11. And after that, advance was smooth, followed by achievement, and self, the self is intimacy. And this one big setback was caused by a crisis in Tim, who disappeared one night, and then he was uh, found by police uh, wandering around in New York City like a sleepwalker. And then he was taken back to the apartment by police officer the following morning. Now, Tim's crisis happened when his intimacy was rising to 100. And his graph, after the uh, scale readjustment in detail, is also telling. When he had this big sudden crisis, was when his intimacy, now under new scale, again approaching the previous maximum of 10, and it rose above 10 and reaching 11, that's when this crisis happened. And it uh, pulled intimacy down temporarily, but that was all it did. It disappeared completely, and then intimacy recovers to reach 12.4. And self and achievement also rose above previous highest point. Now, in six months, therapy ended. The Jane's graph showed continued advance after scale readjustment. Let's look at after the adjustment again in detail. We have seen those three spikes provoked by intimacy rising above previous maximum of 10. This is Tim's crisis. And after that crisis was over, self-intimacy achievement seems to converge and then continue to rise together in balance on their own over time. Tim, at six months point, his progress was also impressive. After the one crisis, it seems to converge and continue to rise together. So if you look at the graph after the uh, scale readjustment, as we saw it, the spike, the crisis occurred when his intimacy again rose above the new redefined previous maximum of 10. So every time intimacy broke through the new barrier, defense, the guerrilla seems to mobilize themselves to trying to slow it down or stop it from rising. And it did again, and then exhausted itself seemingly completely. After that, no more symptoms, and intimacy, self and achievement caught up with intimacy and seemed to rise together in balance. That's how therapy ended in six months. At the end of the therapy, Jane wrote in her own words, rather touching uh, commentary of her experience for the interest and the benefit of future patients, as you will see. I would not read the text, but I will stop for a couple of seconds so you can stop the video and read what she wrote in her own words, the struggle that she went through, page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. 
Now, Tim also wrote his experience in his own words with his own style and interesting uh, humor. And uh, his commentary will be shown for a few seconds for you to stop the video and read it yourself if you are interested. Page two, page three, page four. Now, one year later, Jane sent me an email and uh, said the following. It's been one year since we graduated the therapy. Time flies. We have been happier every day than the day before. We have been together for three years by now, and our friends are amazed at how well we get along. Although we have had a few fights after graduation, every time I get mad at him, I tell myself I might as well apologize right away since we are going to make it up anyway. So we get over arguments instantly. Tim has become even more tender than before, taking good care of me while I am also letting him depend on me more. Since eight months ago, I have been working as a waitress for a restaurant for four days in a week, busy, long, busy days a week at a restaurant. And this job pays my school and gives me spending money so we can eat out often together, and I do not get mad at him as I used to, at every restaurant we went out, we ended up fighting and coming home angry. Now, enjoying the time together, coming home happy. He sometimes teased me saying, you used to blow up over something like this. And then I tell him, I used to be a monster. And I really appreciate you having put up with me. I am truly amazed that it has become natural for me not to get angry and to be happy every day. His, her own words. Jane continued, Yesterday, I went out to a bar with few girlfriends. I told them that I have been cured of borderline personality through therapy. Everyone said that it was impossible to imagine that I could have been so bad. Some congratulated me for having run into a good doctor, and others told me, now I understand why you get along so well. I told him, Tim is my God-given treasure. I also told them, I could never have done it alone. Tim, the doctor, and I worked together as a team to overcome the obstacles. I remember that I had few friends and no one to go out with. After graduation from therapy, I am able to have fun with friends, even when Tim is not with me. I used to quit everything after a while, blaming something or someone else. Now I can study, hold a tough, persevere, and overcome challenges. I have become able to sustain efforts without becoming discouraged. For example, I went to a camera school at night for three months on a side and have learned to develop and print photographs. It was a tough course, but I managed not to quit. Instead of dropping out, I asked for help from fellow students and persevered without missing a single class until I completed the program. And then I didn't hear from her until five years later. She sent me a brief email. She said, having been very happy together for five years, we have both graduated from college, we have both found good jobs, and we have decided to get married. Looking back on the sixth struggle for Jane, it was Jane and Tim, following our summary reflections, the therapy started was a typical crisis in a borderline couple, almost broke up, they were depressed, and so on. And that typically precipitates the beginning of therapy. Now, improvement, even the first week, as you saw, 
Improvement in closeness immediately provoked intense reactions, defensive reactions, spikes of symptoms, and setbacks. But in three-way teamwork, Jane and Tim managed to persist, hang in there, and the defense began to weaken by exhaustion. After many big waves of resistance, the resistance diminished by exhaustion. In six months, they were no longer borderline personalities. The Tim was not typical, but some, several characteristics of borderline personality disorder. Now, based on my experience, the, I can say the therapy with partner improves the outcome tenfold. And if therapy can survive for a first month, outcome improve at that point by sevenfold. And the success rate is 100% if they persist and don't give up, but many do. So actual success rate is 50%. This is based on 224 documented borderline personality patients about 10 years ago. Since ratio has, doesn't seem to change at all, so I have not kept up with counting. Now, if you are interested in going through the struggle, the travel, this road, road less traveled, overcoming the personality, I would be delighted to do my best to help out within the limits of my time. And then if the therapist, my colleagues, are interested, if you can contact me, I may be able to add another weekly online workshop in which I could present interesting cases such as Jane and Tim and many others to explain exactly how transformation of personality happen and symptoms like borderline personalities and others disappear in the process. Thank you for your attention and until next time.